Oh, this is Fuji totes. I just found out Fuji could not come in with me, so I'm making a little video for you to see how the pillow works with the doggy in it. As you see, Fuji's in here in the bottom of this. At the end, after I take him out, I'm going to take all the things that are in here with him. That you need on a trip, or whether you're just going, you know, for an afternoon, everything you need to take the dog. I have driven all the way to Las Vegas, Nevada, and taken Fuji and my other dog on multiple with me with their meds, their leashes, their water, cup, and whatever, and one pack, a couple of packs of food are in the bottom of this. By the way, I even have a COVID test. If you think the dog has COVID, it's in the bottom here, which you can carry. And I'm going to show you, even with all that in the bottom, he can still lay here and, and feel nothing. You see him sitting down on it, he can still do that with all the things in there. And I'll show you what was in there. He had a plate though. He had the COVID test as I laugh about. He has a heavy dish. He has a water bottle. He has some food. And another dish. This pillow only weighs about three pounds. So whatever you need and your necessities are for your dog can go in here along with the dog as you carry him wherever you want to go to the park. And I'll tell you, sometimes I use this to put things as I go outside. So this is Fuji's toes, and they are patented. Now, I'm gonna show you in the presentation the large pillow. All of these are multifunctional pillows that can be used uh, for cover-ups, for totes, for luggage, and I'm gonna tell you the story how I started Fuji toes. Um, Fuji was, but anyway, I'll say that personally to you. I'll have to tell you all that now. Thank you. Welcome to Diane Andrews in Black and White. I'm your host in our Baton Rouge studio here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Thanks for joining us. Whether you're watching us on YouTube, on Rumble, on all our social media handles, which are up on the screen, I try to bring you shows that are prolific, people that are prolific, and I've interviewed a lot of great people. The guest I have with me today is a very good friend of mine. We met at the Republican Convention in Lafayette, Louisiana. He is the only black state senator for the state of Louisiana of the Republican Party, I do believe. We'll ask him when we come back from break. So he is now running. He for the U.S. House, the United States House of Representatives. As we know, we have three branches of government. We have the Congress, which makes up the House and the Senate. Then we have the judicial branch, that's the legislative. And we have the uh, administrative, which is the president, the big, the big boy. And uh, so he will be running for a national seat. He did run for lieutenant governor. You may remember him if you keep up with Diane Andrews in black and white. He is a guy that can't sit down and can't be still and is always trying to do what he can to help our community. And that is every community. Come on back to Diane Andrews in black and white. <music> As I said, this man is a true hero himself. And uh, Southern University editor-in-chief of the paper where he got kicked out of Southern. He was a Navy veteran, um, mountain climber. Very, do you still do any of this? Do you still? Uh, when I have time. Right now I'm so busy. Yeah. I'm a full-time lawyer, a full-time politician, and a full-time mm -hmm. preacher. Now, and, and I have to say this, other people who were running, I did try to contact them to invite them on the show also, but we did not get any return email. They're afraid of you. They're not afraid of me. Cleo Fields has been on here before. Maybe he, he couldn't make it or something. Cleo, when he first became state senator, he came on the show when he was running against Pat Smith. Um, but I do want to say that everybody, we did send an email out to everybody. The date may have not been good for them or whatever the problem was. But... Um, or they may not have wanted to, to be you. Maybe you have more credentials than they do, Senator Guillory. So the, the district, every district changed then. Is we aligned or just two in the state? Parts of Ledlow's district are mm -hmm. now in my district. 
parts of Johnson's district are now in my district. So his district that he'll get, is that, um, not that white black matters, but I guess it does. They said they wanted to make a black district. I read about this one, which is 54% black. It's not really a black district like Troy Carter. His is about 80% black, isn't it? Out that down out of New Orleans, yeah. The, uh, this one is pretty close. 54, 46. 46, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it makes 100, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you and Cleo Fields have a debate? Or are you and any of the other candidates, are you all doing a debate or anything? We haven't uh, debated. We haven't had time to. Actually, uh, Cleo and I, Cleo and I. You know him, right? Long time. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Uh, and we, I don't say anything bad about Cleo. I don't, I've never heard him say anything yeah. bad about me. We, we don't do that right, kind of right. campaign. Um, he's a very uh, gracious guy. Cleo and I have been, yeah. been friends He's a for gracious many years. guy, very gracious man. And I like the way that we are conducting this, this campaign. Yeah. Uh, I've not had anything negative to say about him. I talk about Elbert Guillory. Yeah. And as far and that's as that's the I way it seen, should be. Absolutely. What are you going to do? It doesn't matter what the other people are going to do. He talks about Cleo right. and what Cleo would mm -hmm. do. What are you all's differences? We have, have major differences on immigration. Mm -hmm. I'm for a closed border. Right. He's not for the closed, closed border. Border. Mm -hmm. People amaze me, you know, when Donald Trump had the lowest border uh, crossings in the last 50 years, right? And maybe longer than that. We've had over 10.5 million people come in the board in the last four years under the Democratic Harris administration. And for the first time in, in decades, yeah. we now have outbreaks of measles, tuberculosis. A lot of people don't really know everything that's really going on at that border. Because even right now, Donald Trump did the, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this, but Donald Trump did the executive orders. You don't need a bill passed by the Senate to close that border as president That's of this, these United States. He had 2.4 million crossings in four years. Their term isn't over. Now, that's the ones we know about. What about the ones on, we've got over 400 people on a terrorist watch list exactly. that they know about. How many don't we know about? In addition to the diseases, right. the illegal guns, right. the illegal drugs, right. the human trafficking. The, remember, Harris wants to do a buyback program and make you uh, give up your gun along with uh, <laughs> Medicare for all. The illegal people coming across this country right now, our, our deficit is $36 trillion. We are heading toward bankruptcy and very close to it. One of my big, big issues is this federal spending. We can spend billions of dollars, not millions. We send billions of dollars to just about every hell hole around the earth. That's right. And we what are we getting off. for it? We, we can't take care of things here. Do you know where Kamala Harris is really from? She was born in California and has messed up San Francisco. You've been to San Francisco, right? Yes. My God, a friend of mine was just there, and I did, I'm doing a show uh, later with the, the 10 top cities in the country, okay, population-wise. San Francisco was the most beautiful place in the world. Fisherman's Wharf is boarded. All along the streets, people are, uh, and our veterans. Yes. I, I, that really, I thank you for your service, as I've told you many times. But um, our veterans are lying in their own waste. Yes. And they have a lot of them have PTSD and they're on drugs. It's a sad situation in this country. L.A. Black woman. San Francisco. Black woman. Washington D.C. Black woman. Atlanta, Georgia, was a black woman. Um, black man. In, <laughs> in Houston, he, and I think he just lost election. Black man in Dallas who changed from Democrat to Republican last year. Ten city, top, top ten cities which are dying on the vine yes. are and look like, I, I drove with my first Fuji a year and a half ago because I'm crazy to Las Vegas, me and my two dogs. All I had was a can of Mason. <laughs> I said, I knew mama was on my side, right? But what I saw in 22 made me cry about this country. It is sad. And when I went through Al Albuquerque, there were people just walking around like zombies on fentanyl. People may not know, but fentanyl before this administration, we're killing over 120,000 people in America by fentanyl. Yes. Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid. It is made in a lab, I think. That's exactly, exactly right. And, and it was developed by a white man in the United States. There's a documentary on Fox about it. I didn't know. I knew it was a synthetic.
but it's so much cheaper for them to make than the heroin and you know the poppy fields of Afghanistan one reason we were there Afghanistan more <laughs> poppy fields than any place in the world and now we don't care about that anymore because we got nope. fentanyl 50 times more powerful to 100 than morphine killing you like this and where's it coming from China as they copy everything they're China. making the fentanyl China to our southern border through Mexico into us that's right and it has quadrupled since this administration and the deaths have quadrupled of young people so I don't know what the strategy is here but I will tell you this I've done a lot of shows with Dr. Strand you know it's 8 billion people on earth they want they're expected to get to 10 billion that's not what the big people want that run this world they don't want 10 billion people on the earth they don't want 8 billion people on the earth so maybe it has something to do with the people that run the world. Did you see what Brazil just did to X? Yes, indeed. They told anybody that is posting on X they're going to be fined ten thousand dollars, and they took his uh, Starlink. I think it's called Starlink connection down. Yes. Out of the whole country of Brazil, because that's a communist who is in there now running Brazil. America was the only bastion of freedom left in the world, and if we lose this, we're gone. Freedom. An opportunity, opportunity, which exists nowhere, nowhere else, else on earth. And the one thing we had was what? Everybody wanted their American dream, which was to buy a house. Now, that's one thing black people couldn't do 50 years ago, hardly. Right. 70 years ago. We didn't have generational wealth. The biggest part of generational wealth is owning property, owning your house. We have that opportunity now. So black people can sit here and think all Republicans are bad and all Democrats are good. And I'm not saying all Republicans are good. They're not. Mitch McConnell, I'm so happy he's leaving. He's a crook, <laughs> just like Nancy Pelosi and the rest of the Democrats. But as a whole, the Republicans do not want to destroy this country. I don't think they ever forgot they, they um, lost the Civil War. I don't think they did. The F Confederacy were Democrats. Again, the Klan was Democrats. I did a documentary on it. And they were Democrats. It started in Pulaski, Tennessee is where they started. And then the Jim Crow laws, which they say were Republicans, were Democrats. Absolutely Democrats. They, but I tell you what, they're the best at putting a message out. And everybody follows. The biggest problem with Republicans is Republicans. That's a big problem with Republicans. We don't stick together. We don't follow the same message. Well, they, have, they have the media. Yeah, they own the you, legacy you media, which excluded, is 80% of the media. You excluded. Right. They well, own the okay. media that, that just backs up everything that they well, say. Well, you got Fox does a decent job. Newsmax is very good. They, they're pretty, that's uh, Rudy. He's a very good friend of Trump's. They're pretty good. And they're growing pretty fast. But 75% of the media is legacy and CNN and MSNBC. And they tell the story like they want to tell the story. I wish people would just watch both. Because I used to be, when Obama was running. I was a Democrat. And I said, something not right here. Where's he coming from? Just like, where's this current person coming from, right? Kamala Harris. She was born in, she was born in California. She was a DA, DA in California. She was an AG, one of George Soros' AG for 10 years out there when California started going down to, to where it is today. And she, but she was raised in Montreal, Canada. Yes. Look it up. She went to high school there, West Mount High. A friend of mine went to high school there in Canada. But I had looked it up already, so I called them. And they said, yeah, in, in high school in Canada, it's six years. It's not four. They do a junior high together. And, uh, and then she did go to Howard. I had a man working for me in health care. He was Indian. Hindu is Indian. I had 12 Indians work for me in my years in health care because a lot of Indian doctors sponsored their family to come. Yes. This young man, John Reddy, very good guy, he... Uh, uh, went to, he got his computer science degree, undergrad at Southern University, and then he got his master's. He is right now at Microsoft out in Seattle. So a lot of Indians do associate with blacks, uh, you know, in college, and then she went to Howard. But her daddy's half Indian, and her mother is completely Indian, and she was raised as an Indian in Montreal, Canada from 9 to 18. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I'm a mixed race. It doesn't matter. Truly. Uh, but you're probably 12% Indian because his dad, his mama, I understand, was black and white. So uh, her daddy, who is a Ph.D., who, uh, t uh, did he go to Berkeley and taught at Stanford, I think. Yeah, he, he's 85. He's still living, has not communicated with her in 10 years. He's a, from Jamaica orig originally, 
but they're all kind of racist in Jamaica like they are in America. <laughs> and uh, he is a communist. He is called a, he's a Marxist, and he says he's a Marxist. Karl Marx developed communism. Her mother was a socialist. And then, don't, let's not talk about Tim Walls. Oh, my God. And His brother doesn't coming. speak to him. Yeah. That's the train that's coming down the track toward Yeah, the us. two of them. He's been, he got married in China. He honeymooned in China. And he took his classes to China 30 times. His brother doesn't speak to him. He said, that's not the man we want for vice president of the United States. I would ask people, and people who, I have a lot of people who, who do watch my show, and, and sometimes I have black people come up to me and say, you, you do that show, right? <laughs> I'm almost scared to say that, you know. Yes, I do. But they say, I listen to you and I like you. And I say, yeah, just, and they say, what you're telling, I try to tell truth. I get something wrong, but not too often. And, uh, but what I tell you is the truth. And like I said, when Obama came up, I was a Democrat. I don't vote for you because you're black. I don't vote for you because you're a woman. I vote for you because you're qualified. I was 19 years old. I went to work for IBM, IBM with a math BS in mathematics and computer science. And I earned it. They did by merit. You take a test. I don't believe in giving. I don't believe in DEI. I don't either. I, and they haven't white folks given us, what was that, EEO stuff where you had to hire so many blacks and so many women and they give you businesses and, and SBA where you have to have 51% women are black. All of that That's destroyed called equity there. merit. Yes. It destroyed the quality. Of merit. And, and, and so what do we have in school now? Education. What's your views on education? 13% of the students in Louisiana can read and write at grade level. Only 13%. I know they can't do math. Of course not. So we have to redo the public school system. We need to get the feds and, and government. Get rid of the Department of Education yep, is what you're absolutely. saying. Absolutely. Get them out of the classrooms and let teachers teach. Because a lot, where does all the money go? I didn't know and we, and, Jimmy and Carter started the National Department of Education. <laughs> I didn't know that until recently when I'm doing this civil rights book, my what, sixth book. We have to lift the public public school, the that's public right. school system, but while that's being done, because that'll take at least five or six years, Oh yeah. while that's being done, school choice. Yes. Parents should, should be able to take the money. And Louisiana spends, say, $10,000 per student. Give the $10,000. Minnesota spends more than anybody in the country where this Tim Walls is president, vice president candidate, and he had a snitch line going on with COVID. If you're, you're um, Neighbor came out without a mask on outdoors. They called him, and he, I saw two grandmothers that he arrested for not wearing a mask and put him in jail. This country is going down the wrong track. You may not like Donald Trump. Nobody likes everything he says. But see, I start again. I was at IBM at 19 years old. And when they got in those meetings, if you hadn't done something right, <laughs> which you shouldn't talk back to anybody, <laughs> it was like your daddy, right? <laughs> you, um... They would tell you, get this done. We don't want any lollygagging around just in the staff meeting. Get it done. And that's what people understand if you teach them the tools on how to get it done. Instead of what I see a lot in youth now is they got to ask more questions instead of investigating how to get something done. You wouldn't do that before. When you, and when you had big operations, IBM is pretty woke now. But back then, they were not. And everything was merit-based. But if you want government contracts now, I did a show with Schroeder when he was running for governor. You almost, you know, he took the DEI, he got us out of Blackstone yes. and Black Root, whatever. The, what was the name of it? Black? It's too black. Uh, I think Blackstone. Blackstone and Black Root. Uh, the investment companies that everybody's using. It, and they go out and do DEI. They invest with companies that have DEI. Invest my money with companies that make money. I don't care how many DEI people they have. True. When it comes to money, who cares? What do you think of this idea? This is going to kill everybody who has any kind of generational wealth by owning a house, which most black people do now. The GDP, if you took the GDP of black people in America today, we've come a long way. And I'm not saying we didn't go through a lot. We did. But the way we are today, black people have done a great job building businesses, getting higher education. We've done a wonderful job of doing that. You get Kamala Harris, all that's going to be snatched away from you because she believes, and it's called unrealized capital gains. If your house, you know, people, older people, you may have bought your house uh, 20 years ago, pay $50,000 for it. Today it's worth 500000 Yes. You pay taxes on unrealized capital gains before you sell it. 
your taxes are going to go up to pay on the five hundred thousand dollars. When she Ooh. said that the other day, boy, they got on the on TV saying she didn't mean to say that. <laughs> her, her, her handlers, when she said, and then she mentioned pri price gauging, which doesn't exist. Price gouging is what it's called. Our grocery, she wants the government to provide us food, right? They're going to own the grocery stores. If they say they're from the government run, right? <laughs> like Reagan said. And we're here to help. So if they own the grocery, I heard some big chains saying right now we used to make a 3% profit. Today we make 1.5%. Ain't no price gouging in here. She didn't even know what it was. She's just reading a teleprompter. Every time you see her or any politicians, and Trump needs to use his more, <laughs> she needs to use hers. She cannot do anything with that. How do you think the, uh, the, the, the unions, the, the parent unions, the teacher unions don't want, um, they've already said they don't want school choice. Why would anyone who cares about the student, if I'm a black woman, I live in the hood, I can get my, my daughter or son who's a bright kid to go to a private school because what Donald Trump wants to do and what you want to do is take the money, let's say different, we're 10,000 you say here. Some states are up to 15, I heard Minnesota's one of the largest and they're 39th I think. That their school system is 39th in the states out of 50. But um, if I, um, if I want to take my kid, we're paying the taxes for this. That's what school choice is. You can go to a private school if you want. You can go to a Catholic school if you want. You take the money that the state is paying per everybody's taxes and take your kid out of that disastrous public education if you want to. Exactly. Why would anybody be opposed to that? I don't get it. Trump tried to do it in his first term, and they almost lambasted him so much that he had to give it up, and he didn't own you know, the House or the Senate. Well, we started a voucher program here in Louisiana during uh, yeah. somewhere around What's his name did it? The people they didn't... Uh, Jindal. Jindal, yeah, Jindal who made Jindal. a lot of mistakes, but he did do the voucher, I understand. Yes, he did. I was one of the floor leaders mm -hmm. in bringing that voucher program into existence. And what existence. did it, it was like school choice. I can take that voucher and go where I want as the mother. 10,000 students only. Uh -huh. Those, they had to be very poor and in the worst performing schools in Louisiana. It was supposed to be the beginning of a statewide voucher program. That was a good idea. But it was. It, it ended when Jindal left and was replaced by a liberal Democrat governor. Who was next? Was it Edwards? Edwards. Yeah, Edwards. And he got rid of the voucher program. Oh, yeah. To allow. What about the mothers who had started using a voucher kid program and their kid was in a private school? They had to pull them out. It was, they were squeezed. Mm -hmm. It was, it, that program, it, it just went out of existence. So you're, you do like school choice. So that is Absolutely. your platform. Absolutely. And I mean, I, two things. And I think lift, if we explain that here, system. people will understand what school choice uh, is. Lift the public school system. And school choice. Right Both. now, doesn't part of the money that we pay go to private schools for the rich people who send their kids to private school? Do, is that all just their money? Doesn't some of the dollar for public school now go to private schools? Does any of that go with the student to private schools? I often wondered that. When I left the Senate mm -hmm. a few years ago, mm -hmm. I don't believe that money was state money was going into private schools. There may have been every now and then a special program, mm -hmm. but I by I, and large. You don't think now? Now, people don't know, but charter schools are public schools, absolutely. so that's good. But I don't know if they're any better. I did some shows on charter schools. Are they ranked? Do you know, are they better, ranked better than public? Some of them are. Yeah. And some of them are not. But they do wear uniforms, which I think makes a difference. People have always thought that uniforms were better. What do you think on uniforms versus me wearing what I want to? As long as that child presents himself or herself in a decent way, mm -hmm. I think it's fine. Because uh, they, they had to go to uniforms because parents were not, they were sending the kids with pants halfway down. And people the, killing the each other over their sneakers, right? Right. The Jordans. Exactly. Yeah. Things just got out of hand. So yeah, I like that. I like that idea. I wouldn't want to have to wear one as a person, not grown up. But, <laughs> but well, like, well, nurses do. But you still go out and do things. But I don't know. If, I guess kids like it. Catholic school, they've been doing it for years. All Absolutely. the other uh, 
uh, religious discipline school. Okay, so we know what you're you're fracking. You're, you're against fracking, right? I'm for fracking. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, for fracking. I didn't know what fracking really was until I was doing some of the shows with Eric Lane and, and Matt Coday. I'm and against the whole war against oil and gas. Right. I think that the the market. When, when we move to something better than, than oil and gas, right. then we'll, we'll spend that and money sure for not whatever the EV. that is. It's not the EV. It's not better than oil and gas. What I meant to say, oh, I was thinking you were Kamala. I'm sorry. You were for one day and against the next. Um, when she's in Pennsylvania, she's definitely for fracking. I didn't know what fracking did until I was reading up before the shows. And it's where they break down the, uh, the, the, the rocks or the mountains or whatever to get the liquefied natural gas, the natural gas out, right. right? Why do environmentalists say it's so bad? Do you know? I have no idea. I don't listen to those people too very much. And you know, another thing we could use is nuclear. Macron in France is 95% nuclear. And he also went to paper ballots about five years ago and still has the results. And they're almost 100 million people. He went to paper ballots and he only uses nuclear. Nuclear is really green. Right? It's not emitting any emissions up. You know, That's it's correct. not a CO2 problem with nuclear. We had a couple of accidents with nuclear, I guess, around the world, and now we can't use it anymore. That makes sense. Coal, we, the Democrats got us out of coal. China today is building two to three coal plants a week. That's correct. When I turn these lights on, what backs it up? Some kind of, a, it, when I turn electricity, it's backed by coal and gas. Exactly. You cannot have electricity without coal or gas. That's why I love my show. I learned so much. And that's why I like to tell people because it's not that people are, are stupid by any means. It's just you're not around this, right? And, and you have to kind of, I was always investigative. That's why I told you I didn't vote for Obama. I was a Democrat. I said, where you come from? So is that one message that you would like to give to the people? I Before love my God, mm -hmm. I love my country, and I'm a country boy with country boy common sense. That means you love legal guns. Well, of course. <laughs> yeah. I'm a gun boy. Yeah. I am the, I'm very qualified. I represent the values of Louisiana. I will protect you and your family from the government and the government spending from crime and from, from criminals. I will do all that can be done to protect us, the people of Louisiana. Thank you for joining Diane Andrews in black and white. And I think you know who Senator Guillory is. And I think he's a wonderful man. Coming back next week to Diane Andrews in black and white. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.